to call to order the Finance and Audit Committee meeting for Monday, March the 19th. If you would all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. All right, first on the agenda, we have the approval of the minutes. Do I have a motion from the floor? So moved. Second. A second, okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Um, any uh, nays? Anyone opposed? Okay. Likes aye? None? Okay. The motion carries. Um, and forgive me, I just I should have asked if there were any uh, comments or questions on it. Were there? I, I take it there were none, so. Next time I'll include that. Uh, next we have a public comment on agenda items. Do we have anyone signed up to speak? No. Alina indicates no. Would anyone from the audio, audience care to speak today before the Finance and Audit Committee meeting? Okay, or committee. Um, it looks like seeing none, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is presentations. And the first we have uh, Sherry Baycart here to report on the comprehensive financial annual financial report. Uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Lucian morning, Campbell, Lucian. Uh, Interim Chief Financial Officer. Uh, this morning, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, uh, Lauren uh, Strope and, and uh, John Gilberto from Cherry Beckert. They uh, helped us with our CAFR, or Comprehensive Annual Financial Report. Uh, they're working with us for the last six months. Our new auditor, uh, usually we, we had CLA last year. This is the first time Cherry Beckert. They've been great. They've been very professional. Uh, we've learned something from them. Hopefully, they learned something from us also. But uh, they've helped make sure that you know we're in the clear. And uh, they'll go ahead and give you a report. See you now. Good. Thank you, Lucian. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be your auditor. My name is John Gilberto. I'm the partner with Jerry Beckert. Uh, we're located just a couple blocks down the street from, from you guys. And to my right is Lauren Strope. Lauren is my senior manager was kind of over the day-to-day -day operations of making sure everything got done and um, in a timely manner. What we have for you today is a presentation of your CAFR and then the results of our audit. So as I said, your CAFR, this CAFR document that you have um, is yours. It is not ours. It is not management's. It is yours, and the numbers in it are yours as those charged with governance of the Board of Heart. So we want to make sure that you're comfortable with the audit we did, and we're going to go over the time and the nature and extent of the, our audit results, and that's what our presentation is that you have. Thank you. So with that, um, we have completed an audit, and we uh, plan to issue our, our audit report today after your approval of the uh, financial statements. You follow GAAP. That is the accounting principles that make up the debits, the credits, how you record your assets, your liabilities, the valuation, and all of those type of things that are in your financial statements. We follow two forms of GAAS. The first one is the auditing standards, which we audit to make sure you're following GAAP so that we can issue our opinion on your financial statements. The other gas is the government auditing standards where we look at internal controls over financial reporting in compliance with laws, regulations, contract agreements, state statutes, and such. We also follow, um, uh, on your single audit, you have two other sections of uh, guidance that we have to follow. Under the federal grants, we have to follow the uniform guidance. And on your state grants, we follow Chapter 10550, the rules of the Auditor General of the State of Florida. So that is all the guidance we follow to make sure that you're in compliance with GAAP. When we look at these things, we look at the internal controls over your compliance requirements on your federal and state programs, and then we look at the compliance requirements on the major programs, which we'll touch on what those major programs are in just a minute. The good news is there were no changes in the scope of our audit from when we planned our audit, what we understood coming in, when we had our interviews, when we went through our due diligence, through the, uh, the process of the audit plan that we have put in place. And that's a good thing, because if there's changes in the scope of the audit, then we'd be telling you bad news right now. So that's not a, a bad place to be at this point in time. There were no new significant accounting policies. There was no new GAAP adopted this year. We'll talk a little bit in a minute about what future GAAP will affect you in the future. But this year, there was nothing new. So your financial statements are pretty much the same as they were last year. So you read the notes. You look at the numbers and the financial statements. There was no changes due to an adoption of OPEP last year or anything to that effect this year. So they're on a really true apples to apples basis with no restatements this year. So that's a good thing. However, in your financial statements, it's not just hard invoices, cash outflow. There are a lot of estimates that are made. And there are material estimates that are made, such as your OPEP, your pension. Those numbers are done by actuaries. They're very large numbers that we audit, that we look at the assumptions for. Uh, we test the, the data that's going to the actuaries to make sure that it is right. And those numbers are estimates, and they're not hard facts. 
There are other estimates too, like the estimated useful life of your capital assets. If you have a lot of capital assets that are fully depreciated and they're still in use and gonna be in use for several more years, then you need to step back and take a look at those estimated useful lives. We didn't see that, so that's a good thing. Also, allowance for doubtful accounts and your insurance reserves. They incurred but not reported are our best guess of what is incurred at a point in time. So those are estimates that are in your financial statements that we look at that are materially financial statements that could have material effect in your financial statements. And management does a good job and is very conservative on their approach. With that, I'm going to turn it over to um, Lauren to go through the next couple of slides on some of the other procedures that we did and some of the results of the audit procedures. Hi. Uh, professional standards require us to communicate to you any sort of known or um, audit adjustments that we have. So an audit adjustment is after we receive the child balance, if there's anything that we recommend to management that needs to be adjusted at that time. We did have one entry which related to a cash balance in the impressed account. The entry decreased that cash balance and recorded an expense. And we'll kind of go into that in a little bit here with the finding. We are pleased to report that there are no uncorrected misstatements. What an uncorrected misstatement is, is a misstatement that we have identified, brought to management, but it's not material enough to significantly impact the financial statements. At that point, it's management's decision to either make the entry or not make the entry. If they do not make it, we communicate it to you. We are pleased to report that we didn't have any of those. Um, and to go over the internal controls, a deficiency in internal control really exists when the design of the control doesn't allow management the opportunity to detect any sort of misstatement during the normal course of business. So that's kind of your level one. <coughs> then you go into a significant deficiency, which is a deficiency or combination of a deficiency in internal controls that are less severe than a material weakness, yet important enough to merit attention by those charged with governance, which would be the board. The third and most serious type of internal control that you can have is a material weakness, which is a deficiency or combination of deficiencies that is so severe that it does not allow management enough time and there's a reasonable chance that a, a material misstatement could get through. And what material means is it could impact either a granting agency or somebody who's in a decision-making function, their decision over the financial statements. So I'm not that smart. I didn't come up with these. That's, this is actually all in the audit guidance. Um, we have mm -hmm. one significant deficiency this year, which related to the premium transit feasibility study. And that was placed on the CIFA, or on the schedule of expenditures of federal awards. It's actually state awards, so it was on the, the state award part of the schedule. And that was in the amount of $562,000. And basically, that was placed on the schedule, and it shouldn't have been on the schedule. It was not grant funding that was received. Um, that could have led us to audit that program as a major program and report that on your CIFA to the state, um, which would have been a bad thing because it never should have been on there. So it was our recommendation that that was taken off, um, and thus that was a significant deficiency. There was a control deficiency, which remember is that first level, mm -hmm. um, and that related to the impress accounts. And so basically the impress <laughs> accounts are just accounts that are held by third-party administrators for the self-insurance. So when there's a claim, those third-party administrators pay on Hart's behalf, but that money is it's Hart's. Um, so at year end, the account had been used, yet it was not recorded yet in Hart's financial statements because of the fact that it was on the 15th, I think it was, it was mid-month that all the statements were received and it was reconciled. So that, was, that related to the entry um, and the control deficiency. And I went through that pretty quick. Any questions, I would love to, to answer for you. Any questions from the committee? No, but thank you for explaining those. Not a problem at all. Yeah, thank you for the background as well. Okay. We are pleased to report that there were no disagreements or difficulties with management. Um, really, they were a pleasure to work for. Mm -hmm. Everything we asked for, they were able to provide. Every question we had, they had the guidance for. It, it was really a wonderful working experience, so we're pleased to report that. And okay. we'd like to thank all of them for their time, because we know they have a job to do that's not just the audit as well. We are pleased to report that there were no consultations with other accountants that we were aware of. That's only important because if management was going to rely on basically, hey, this other CPA said we want to do X, Y, and Z, so that's why we're doing X, Y, and Z. We just want to make sure that both sets of CPAs got the same information to then come to the same conclusion. Um, before we accepted Hart as a client, we have to do a variety of procedures on our part to ensure that 
there are no litigation, that there's not significant issues that we're going to need to be aware of. And we are pleased to report that we did not have any of those. As far as written communications, we will receive a written management representation letter that will be dated today. I'm going to send that over to management right after this meeting. Um, and basically what that says is everything that they provided to us or told us throughout the course of the audit is true to the best of their knowledge and belief. Lastly, we have issued, or we will be issuing today, a management letter that's required by Chapter 10.550 Rules of the Auditor General, and that's the second to the last report in the cap in front of you. So with the supplemental information, in addition to the basic financials that you have, and you can, if you look at the uh, table of contents, it goes through what the basic financials are and then what the supplementary information is. Um, but with respect to the supplementary information, which includes management's discussion and analysis and the required supplementary information, we actually don't opine directly on that. Um, we don't audit that information. What we do is we get an understanding from management from how that information is created, and we ensure that it either ties to or reconciles to the audited financial statements where it should. Um, there are also some supplementary schedules, including um, the schedule of expenditures of federal awards and state financial assistance. Usually it's called the CIFA. Um, and so that is also an in relation to opinion where we get information. We ensure that that's either tying to the CAFR or reconciles to the CAFR, and we go through management on how that's created. There's also an introductory and statistical section in your CAFR, and that's what makes it a CAFR. Um, if you didn't have that, it would just be a basic, uh, just be a financial statement. Um, and on that, we do not express an opinion or really provide any insurance on the uh, introductory or the statistical section. With the compliance audits, we did do um, basically two compliance, both federal and state. So the federal is performed under uniform guidance. It used to be A133, so you might be familiar with that language. Um, and under the state side, it's done under the rules of Chapter 10.550, Rules of the Auditor General of the State of Florida. We did test one major federal program, and that would be the federal transit cluster, and I think that makes up about 99% of the federal funding that comes in. Um, and that includes quite a few CFDA numbers or catalog numbers, as you can see. We also did the state program, which is the public transit block program, and that is catalog number 55.010. And we are pleased to report that we did not have any findings on the single audit side of things. So uh, the final uh, communication that we want to go over with you uh, as it relates to our required communication to you as those charge of governance is uh, the following three items that we have here. The first one is um, our determination, our judgment about uh, your accounting staff and your use of accounting principles. Uh, we think they understand accounting principles very well. We think they're conservative in nature as they apply them, which is a good thing from us as your auditor point of view. Um, and so the questions they had to us were very high level and very sincere and very thought well thought out. So we do appreciate everything they did. They did a great job. Uh, again, as Lauren said, they everything we asked for, we, you know, we we audit everybody. And God we trust, but if you don't, you're not God, we audit you. So we don't take their word for things. They have to show us the support, the documentation, and they had no problems with providing all those things for any questions or all the, the work that we need to do to issue our opinions. So we want to thank them for their hard work and their diligence on making sure the records are in good shape. As it relates to fraud and illegal acts, uh, your external auditor does not, is not required to audit for fraud. However, we do inquire fraud. We've talked to several people throughout the organization. Nothing was raised or brought to our attention that changed our audit scope or made us change our audit procedures. Uh, no one brought any fraud to our attention that we needed to bring up to your attention. And as it relates to independence and objectivity, Cherry Beckard, myself, Lauren, and our staff are independent not only in parents, but in fact in relation to our audit of heart. There are uh, two other deliverables that aren't completed yet. The uh, National Tra uh, Transit Database uh, Agreed Upon Procedure Report is in process right now. And after the financial statements are issued, the data collection form, which is the apples to apples view of your federal grants up into a clearinghouse for the federal clearinghouse, will be completed um, as soon as we are able to issue the report and, and roll that up into that, that document. As I promised you, the, the good news. <laughs> New Gatsby's, and there are a lot of them. However, there's only one or two that really will have a material effect on you, really one that will have a material effect on you, and that doesn't have to come in place until after 2019, and that is leases. All of your leases that you have, um, that you are leasing operations or equipment from, will probably most likely be 
liabilities and assets on the face of your statement going forward, like a capital lease or a purchase agreement. It's a financing agreement. Instead of being a, a, a operating lease that is just in your notes, it'll be specifically showing up on your face of your statements with an asset and a, an offsetting liability and then recorded um, down in that fashion. For a lot of entities, a lot of governments that do a lot of leasing, that is going to be a material amount of work to summarize all that valuation, get depreciation methods in place or amortization methods in place for the intangibles and then get that set up. So that I know that management is already kind of looking into that um, and that will have a, a material effect on your financial statements, but not until 2020. The other things that are coming up uh, really don't affect you uh, too much. Um, actually, none of the other ones really have any effect on you at this point in time or in the, in the near future. The big one, again, down the road is leases, so you're aware that that will be coming and you will not be seeing operating leases, you will be seeing assets and set up liabilities in the future. Okay. Just a quick question on the lease, uh, the, the Gatsby change mm -hmm. regarding leases. Yeah. So that, that's just really us adapting to a coming change. It's nothing that we've, you know, yep. it's it's just a, Exactly. That's okay. a perfect way to put it. It is just an adaption to the current change. Everybody's doing this, not just government. Right. Uh, International IFRS started, started up a little while ago. Um, FASB for all the public companies in the United States is following it now too. And GASB is kind of almost word for word for what the International and the FASB is doing. So that GASB, your accounting standard, your GAAP is following that. And yet what they're doing, again, is it's pretty simple. If you have any, any, any lease from a copier to a bus to a train that is for more than pretty much a year, you're going to show an asset and a liability instead of having it just in a note disclosure. Okay. So you're going to gross up those numbers so the reader can see what your true exposure is, your debt exposure is. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions on that? No. Anyone else? Okay. okay. And lastly, um, we were told that you guys are used to seeing your cash flow and your changes in cash. So um, we put a slide in together to um, show your total cash balances and kind of history of your cash balances uh, and related to the um, unrestricted and the restricted. And you can see that cash has increased about $2 million this year. And it's really due to the release of the receiving of receivables from the prior year. You had about $13 million in receivables prior year from state and federal. Those receivables were received this year. Um, and therefore, your cash went up about um, two to $3 million from the prior year. And your unrestricted cash actually increased a little bit too. So that is a look at your cash position over um, the last six years. Okay. And uh, we'd be happy to answer any other questions you have. And, and typically we know that when we leave the room, questions come up and our contact information is on the last page. Um, we are available to answer questions throughout the year, not just when we're doing the audit. Uh, we serve at your pleasure, so our contact information is there if questions come up after we do leave. But we'll be happy to answer any questions you have now. Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Gilberto and, and your colleague as well. Appreciate you guys, uh, you know, your first time auditing uh, Hart. We really appreciate it. It sounds like it was a, a great experience, and I'm glad to hear that uh, you had a good uh, interchange with staff as well. So um, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, are there any uh, questions from the committee on the presentation? <clears throat> no, it's always um, um, nice to hear that the staff that we think are great, are that once they handle this type of situation, somebody else knows they're great. So yeah. I appreciate all the work of everybody out there who had some, anything to do with this. So, uh, and it's nice to know that the information was available immediately. That, that's yeah. very important to know. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councilman <coughs> Donahue. I, I agree. Okay, thank you all. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Have, have a great week. All right. Well, we're um, we're going to shift the agenda item around just a little bit. If I uh, hope that's uh, not too inconvenient, but we're going to move agenda item two B up and cover that first and uh, defer item two A uh, for for just a little while. So, if we could. Uh, Move on to item two, agenda item two B. That uh, who do we have presenting on that? Brian. Allen. Oh, Brian Allen. Okay, Mr. Allen. Good morning, Brian Allen, interim director of maintenance. Good morning. I'm bringing forward a resolution to purchase up to seven replacement staff cars. These will be three SUVs, two vans, and two pickups for route maintenance. Um, we are paying for these um, through FTA grant and insurance proceeds. Okay. All right. Are there any questions on item 2B? No. Okay. Is there a motion from the floor to advance this to the, I believe this needs to be advanced to the board. Do we have a motion from the floor? I so move to approve. We have a second. second. Okay. All those in favor, any discussion, questions? Okay. All those in favor, uh, please say yes, or please indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, all, all opposed, like sign. Okay. 
The motion carries. Thank, Thank you very you. much, Mr. Allen. All right. Two C. All right. We're going to go ahead and keep moving through the agenda to item two C. And let's see. We have uh, Mr. St. Pierre. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Philip St. Pierre, Manager of Scheduling Services in the Service Development Department. During the January Legislative and Strategic Planning Committee and the uh, the February Full Board of Directors meeting. Uh, our staff presented a plan to uh, to use the current and future funds for the uh, 20X and the 51LX to create a new route called the 275LX uh, that would serve the wire grass to uh, university area via Bruceby Downs from the university area down to downtown to Marion Transit Center with the possibility going out to the airport. Uh, this new route would merge elements of the, of the current 51LX uh, into the 275LX and would continue to fund the 20X with an extension to MacDill Air Force Base. Uh, during that February board meeting, we were approved to go out to public outreach. And uh, as it stands now, Hart has conducted 10 outreach sessions, uh, four ride-alongs on the current 51LX, one open house, and we have one upcoming public hearing on March 28th. Uh, we have approximately 90 responses so far regarding the new route proposal, and staff will report on that fee public feedback during the presentation to the April committee, and then we'll um, advance that to the, uh, the May full board to ask for approval to implement this route. Um, today, uh, we're looking to advance uh, this action item regarding the joint participation agreement uh, between HART and FDOT to the full board of directors meeting on April 2nd. This action item would authorize the HART's interim CEO and FDOT to execute a JPA to restructure the current and future funding for the 20X and the 51LX into the new 275LX. Um, HART would uh, continue to operate the 20X and we would uh, discontinue the Route 51 LX and call it the, and, and it would be replaced by the new 275 LX alignment. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. St. Pierre. Uh, are there any questions <coughs> or discussion? Yeah, I was going to ask you about Council public Bond. comment, but I understand that you're bringing that to us at a later date. Yes, ma'am. After the public hearing uh, on March 28th, that, that, that committee in, in April will bring the full presentation on the public outreach and uh, bring the proposed alignment to the to the committee and the full board in, in May. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Okay. <clears throat> Any other questions or discussion? Okay. All right. That being said, thank you, Mr. Thank you. Here. Um We have a motion from the floor to advance uh, this item to the board. So moved. So moved. Do we have a second? Okay. Hearing a second. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, like sign. Okay, the ayes carry the motion. All right. Next is agenda item, uh, I'm sorry, we get my numbers right, 2D. <laughs> uh, and I um, believe, we, do we have Mr. Uh, Mr. Cochran? Mr. Cochran, <clears throat> manager of planning here. Good morning. Good morning, committee members. Uh, Chris Cochran, manager of planning. Um, today, I uh, have a, a, a item before you. Um, we had previously come and spoken to you during the February 4th um, board meeting in speaking about the proposed uh, BRT study on the um, Florida and Fowler corridors and Nebraska corridors looking at um, upgrading the existing um, uh, Metro Rapid corridor to make it um, more BRT-like and study the improvements that we can make in that corridor. And we are prepared at this time to, in conjunction with FTOT, to move forward with the JPA upon your review and recommendation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Cochran. I know that this, this is a much discussed item out, out there in the uh, sphere. Are there any questions or discussion on, on this item? <laughs> Are we still in parallel to two, two studies that are looking very much alike? Um, they are they are in parallel corridors. One is a regional route, mm -hmm. the other being a very localized route. Um, I think one of the important things to remember here is the advantage of looking at at this corridor is is we already have made about a um, a little over $30 million in investments in infrastructure that would allow us to um, um, leverage that opportunity to further develop the local BRT service that could feed the regional, um, the regional 
vision. Um, I think also um, that goes a long way in making this a very, um, a very opportunistic uh, federal grant opportunity, which will be a part of this study at the end. A, a deliverable from it would be a small starts application. And ultimately, the idea here in getting some of these BRT studies moving and getting some BRT um, actual routes moving um, in the area really allows us to move forward with, with um, it, it really feeds into the likelihood of further BRT routes occurring throughout throughout the system and, and the county as a whole. So a, a, please keep that in mind. That's a good answer. Thank you. That yes, ma'am. Yeah, and, and, and uh, Chris, if you're my mind, I've seen it. I've heard the word, you know, word parallel used. I think, I think there is a parallel, but this all run, also runs down Fowler, am I, am I correct? I mean, yes, sir, it does. And, and it will connect the university area with um, at the at the 275 Nebraska area, there's a, uh, they're looking now at a at a potential intermodal center in that area where you know the regional and local services would connect. Um, so it, it's the the Fowler corridor is being studied very heavily right now and is um, absolutely going to be a, a critical corridor in in, in um, being able to leverage some um, right of way for dedicated lanes, some AV in the future as well. So. Um, it plays well into that as well. Yeah, uh, and just one, one quick uh, just kind of comment is it's my understanding that this would either uh, would either replace and or enhance the current Metro Rapid service on, on, the, on the north-south corridor, is that correct? Uh, absolutely, so absolutely. That, that's really this, the, the, this study is aimed at how do we make the Metro Rapid, uh, the existing Metro Rapid better. Right, more and, robust. Right? Yes, so, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cochran. Yeah, I think in terms of uh, you know advancing this to the board, I I, I personally uh, think it's a good you know it'll be a, a robust discussion at, at the board, and you know I, I look forward to having that discussion. So I'm I'm prepared to advance it. So I agree. Okay. Thank in you. that case, I move to approve. Okay. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor of the motion aye. indicate by saying aye. 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 Uh, opposed, like sign. Okay. The ayes carry. The motion carries. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. Cocker. All right. Next we have. Where are we in the agenda? E. Item 2E. Thank you, Thank you Kenyatta. Ms. Randall, good morning. Good morning. Diane Randall, Temporary Director of Risk Management. I'm here this morning for um, <coughs> authorization for the interim chief executive officer to award a contract for property and casualty insurance broker services to Risk Management Associates doing business as Public Risk Insurance Agency an amount not to exceed 200000 for a one-year contract with four one-year options. Okay. Part is in need of the property and casualty insurance broker to procure and provide insurance-related services to Hart for all risk-related operations. Um, we're requesting that this item be moved to the full board on April 2nd. Thank you, Ms. Randall. All right. Are there any questions on the item? No. No? no? Any discussion? Okay. Would uh, anyone be interested in moving this to adva advance it to the board? No motion to approve. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Second? Okay. All those in favor of the motion <laughs> indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed, like sign. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I, the ayes carry. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Ms. Randall. All right. On to agenda item 2E. Uh, we have. Uh, two, I'm sorry, that was 2E. Sorry, I need more. I need to keep drinking my coffee. <laughs> uh, Lee is uh, 2F, and I believe evolution. Uh, to uh, to address this agenda item. Hey, good morning, uh, Lucian Campbell, Chief Interim again. Chief Financial <laughs> Officer. Again, uh, you do receive just received a presentation on the cap. Uh, it does require uh, a recommendation that, that the Finance and Audit Committee review the action item and authorize, authorizing to receive and file the fiscal year ending uh, September 30th, 17. Uh, CAFR and advance this item to the full heart board of directors. So th there is an action item that's required. Okay. All right. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, all those, indicate, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Okay, all those opposed like sign. Okay, the ayes uh, carry. Thank you, Mr. Campbell. All right, and now we are moving back to agenda item 2A. And we have Mr. Shannon Haney here. Good morning, Mr. Haney. Good morning, everyone. Good Shannon morning. Haney, the uh, Intelligent Transportation Systems uh, Project Manager. And this uh, project with the Connected Vehicle Technology, uh, HART has decided to support this uh, since 2015. However, uh, staff feels it uh, would be in great interest to make sure that we have a memorandum of understanding in place so that way uh, we are aware of the partnership and the roles and responsibilities. So um, we'd like to recommend that, the, that we be able to authorize the 
the interim CEO to enter into a memorandum of understanding uh, to continue to participate with this project. And once uh, that, this project will have a duration of 18 months once it's deployed uh, this year in 2018. Okay, thank you, Mr. Haney. Um, any questions or discussion on the item or comments? Um, just one comment, and I think I've, you know, here being out there and hearing about it, I, from what I understand, things are going quite well. Would any additional comments, Mr. Haney? I'd it's going extremely well. Uh, we're planning, hopefully, to deploy in May. We're going to have up to 10 street cars, up to 10 buses, and uh, we also have provisions to, uh, whenever we get the autonomous vehicles, to have that also outfitted with this technology, which will provide a safer downtown for not only pedestrians, but also help uh, ease some of the traffic flow. So it's a really exciting project. We have one of the uh, only three in the country to have this awarded to us. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Appreciate it. Um, unless there's any further discussion or question, do we have a motion to approve? <laughs> we hear that to comment move. a lot. What's We're that? one of, We're one and it'll of. be a, yeah. a small number. We're <laughs> the first to do this, and yet we still, for some reason, are fighting for respect in the community. So we need to get that out there. We're working a better way. So I definitely move to approve. Need to, uh, <laughs> do we have a second? Second. All right, I third that, and I say we keep fighting. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, Oppose like sign. All right, the eyes carried. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Haney. All right, now we are on to um, discussion item uh, 3A, the monthly fi monthly financial review. Mr. Kimball. Uh, good morning CFO. again. Good morning again. All right. Uh, if you turn to page uh, 3 dash one or 3 dot uh, tech one in your packet, uh, you kind of move to the uh, takeaways uh, for the the monthly financial uh, review. Uh, the really important things is we're within one percentage point of where we're expected to be in our, our budget. So that's, that's good. I mean, we're pretty happy with that. Uh, we still are working with the county right now to get the uh, promised funding. Uh, we feel pretty confident we're going to get that pretty soon. But uh, we have not amended our budget in anticipation of that yet. So those numbers don't reflect that. I want to make sure you understand that. Uh, and also in May, we'll have a much better idea of the impact of Mission Max. Uh, we've seen some decline in ridership. Uh, and you'll see that if you look at our uh, income or revenues uh, coming in through. But you know, once again, we feel in May we'll have a really uh, a much stronger position to talk about what we learned from Mission Max. Okay. Yeah. Uh, pending any questions, that, that's really all I have this morning. Any questions or, or discussion? No. Thank you for providing those. Yeah, I think we all look forward to, to May and, and mm -hmm. you know and a, and a more comprehensive update on Mission Max. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, I believe that is our last item. Unless there's any uh, anything else. With that, we're adjourned. Thank you all. Thank you. Have a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.